Hallelujah. So if you'll stand for the reading of the word this morning with me. Uh, it's Matthew chapter 11. I'm just going to read three verses here. Matthew 11, 28 and verse 30. Matthew 11, starting at verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <coughs> this morning, he, he's making a, we can look at it as a command or we can look at it as a gentle plea. Come unto me, all ye that are weary, all you are burdened, all you that labor and you're laden or heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. Jesus talked about entering to his rest. Aren't you glad that we're able to enter into his rest this morning, enter into the rest of the Lord, enter into his presence? In his presence there is peace. In his presence there is joy. In his presence there is comfort. In his presence there is sweet release. And let's, let's love him one more time before we're seated. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. We see that these are the words of Jesus uh, spoken just shortly after he declared the knowledge concerning the Father and the Son. What was the knowledge that he had imparted into the disciples about the Father and the Son? Trigger your mind just for a quick moment. This is not a hard test. It comes by revelation. Because we see that in John chapter 14, chapter 15, up through 17, you know, through the, the scriptures, he preached about him being the one sent from God about him and the Father being one and and they still want to argue with the word and the and the Logos word as being making it a dual instead of triune God. And uh, then someone add that fourth Logos with the Trinity to make them four. See how complicated? And Jesus didn't make the gospel complicated. He was just trying to get to their reasoning or get beyond their reasoning that some things only come by divine revelation. And you know, if, if the world needs a not a new translation. They don't need a revised translation. They just need a revelation. Oh, hallelujah. You know, uh, the Greek and the Hebrew uh, is wonderful tongues if you can understand it and, you, and to see how all these things fitly join together. But Jesus said in no short term that a child didn't have to understand Greek and Latin and Hebrew to understand the Word of God. He said that a child, it's written simply enough that a child is able to understand. You know, but as the older we get, the more complicated we like to make things. Uh, 
Lady Clara was with Papa last night and we were making cookies. You know, she didn't care about, well, she asked a lot of questions, but you know, like, why did you put the, the flour or the sugar and the butter and why did you stir it, you know, blend it together and then why did you add that stuff? Why are you doing that stuff? You're putting the flour, all the dry ingredients mixed in the sifter and, and why are you putting it in there? You know, she had all those questions and yet she didn't have a question when it came out of the oven, can I have a cookie pop on? See, before the oven, it was just dough. Before the dough, it was just a lot of useless ingredients, really. Because the egg is useless without the, the, the butter and the sugar. Even all those whipped together is useless without the sugar, or the flour, the salt, and the uh, baking soap. But when you put it all together and to the dough, it, it becomes a little more useful, or she did enjoy eating the dough out of the... I bet, Pablo, this is good cookie. No, 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 that's cookie dough. That's not the cookie, that's just the cookie dough. It, it, it is the same thing when we begin to look into the Word of God. We see all the ingredients. So our finite mind is trying to take all those ingredients, put them together, and, and it's like, well, how, how does this happen? Why? why? What? We have to have the faith yes. and to believe that Jesus is who he said he was and that we know that he is today. Right. He was in the beginning, he was in the present, and he is still in the future now, which is our present day. So to him, he's never really going to be a future because he will always be in the present, in the here and now. Only when time is no more, then we don't have to worry about this here and now, past, future, or past, present, and future. Kind of tense of our English. But Jesus explained to them and gave them an insight to the knowledge of the Father and who the Son came to be through a revelation. But here in this passage this morning, Notice the word rest. It is used twice in this passage. It is preceded by the words, I will give. Then the second set of words are the phrase, ye shall find. And if we will obey his words, it will be amazing what will astonish us in what happens or what follows. Jesus further declared, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we often hear people say, it's so hard to live a Christian life. But listen to what an individual says. It is so hard to live like a Christian. It's so hard to be a Christian. Those words are really contradictory of what Jesus said. Right. What did Jesus say? My yoke is easy, but we make it so hard. He says my yoke is easy, and we just make it so difficult because of our stinking thinking. But in this passage, there are three commands that are issued. The first is come. One does not come to the Lord by a mere mental asset of biblical truth. You know, people can meditate, they can get their fingers in the right position, they can cross their legs, and they can close their eyes, and, and this is stupid, but they say, empty your mind out. Mm. It's dangerous to empty your mind out because if you have an empty mind, someone's gonna fill it. Something will. We need to, when uh, David talked about meditating, 
He didn't say anything about empty your mind out. He said, I will meditate on thy word. I will meditate on thy testimonies. I will meditate on thy law. I will meditate on thy precepts. So when, he, you know, it wasn't the fact that he emptied anything out. He just took what he already had and continued to think on the Lord. His God. Hallelujah. What better place when you run into the tabernacle or into a pavilion and you're running away from the enemy to begin to think about how good God is. Oh, hallelujah. When I think about the Lord and how he saved me, how he raised me, how he's you know, filled me with the Holy Ghost. Those are some things that we need to think about. Think about what Mary thought and her process when the wise men, the shepherds, came by to visit. Think about what Mary thought about when they went before the priest and they began, she began to hear the words of prophecy over Jesus. She didn't empty her heart out. She didn't empty her mind out and did something. Mm. She, she took all the words that she heard and pondered them in her heart. That means she thought about them a lot. She meditated on them. Is this really? I mean, she think about the amazement of hearing the angel said, Mary, I realize you're just a young virgin, but this thing that happened to you is, is of the Holy Ghost, is of God. She, those were the ones are the first words that she pondered in her heart. Because there was doubt when uh, Joseph came and said, wait a minute, I, I don't want you. But he didn't make a public scene of it. He was going to put it away privately, but God had to intervene. Joseph, don't do this. Mary is an honorable young lady. Take her as your wife. <laughs> don't destroy her. Don't send her away. Don't cast her away. You, but we see that it's something that we just don't just stumble onto. We didn't just find this by accident. Someone with a, pur with a purpose, with a motive, crossed your path one day and put a, planted a seed in your heart. And you, when Jesus said, come, he was not just saying, just come follow me and just see what I'm going to give to you. But he said, when you, when you come, it is because of the obedience to the gospel. And the basis of the gospel is none other than the death, burial, and resurrection. Repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. We see that faith and obedience are essential for the beginning of this spiritual life. The same faith and obedience that's necessary for the continuance in this spiritual life. So one must not only come to Him, but one must also abide in Him. This abiding is also seen in the words of Jesus here in uh, verse 29. It is though abiding in Jesus, we enter into the fullness of His rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. In Psalm 37 and verse 7, the psalmist David said, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Sometimes we lack patience. We know that rest is needful. But we can't rest adequately if our mind is filled with stuff. We can't rest properly if there is, whether it's white noise or black noise. And the reason I say it's black, it has nothing to do with music. It just has a lot of to do with stuff. You know, the elevator music, 
the background music, that soft, soothing music, or we go to loud, yakking, screaming, yelling, kids, you know, being irresponsible, and, uh, and the noise of the neighborhood, traffic, and between the police, fire, rescue, sirens blowing, and that's black noise, because it, it just feels our, I mean, it's penetrating to our ears. For the last 40 years that I know of, you can set your alarm by it at 9.45. There's an alarm that goes off every night. When we lived closer to the alarm, uh, it was louder. On nice evenings when the air is pretty still, it sounds like it's in the backyard. But Market Heights has a curfew at 9.45 that alarm, that siren goes off. It just blur just for a few seconds and it's over. Just a warning. Parents, do you know where your kids are? All right, kids, you know what time it is. It's time to be home, whether they enforce a curfew or not, but you know, it's an alarm that's gone off. So there are the, these noises that penetrate our mind. Some noises are maybe not audible noises. These are those worries and those fret noises. You close, you lay down, you've got your lights turned off. Maybe your room is silent, you don't have any CDs, radio, or anything else playing, and you want to lay your head on the pillow, go to sleep because you're tired and you want to rest for your body. But you've got the noise that's going on in your head. We have this bill and we can't pay it. We've got this and, you know, the kids need shoes. You know, they need clothes. Uh, what are we going to do with school next year? What are we going to do? Where are we going to live? We're going to move. Or... And so there's just so much stuff. You know, our, our kids' life are, you know, in turmoil. Our neighbors' life is, you know, people that we work with, you know, we'd love to help them. And, and their life is such a mess. And, and so some of us, we take on everybody else's problem and make it our problem, too. So when we lay down at night, we can't turn it off. But there are some things that, like the psalmist David says, when we enter to his rest, we have to wait patiently. Patiently. Do you realize when you get into that place where you just say, okay, Lord, it, it, this may be the bed, but I'm going to say, I'm, this is my recliner. I'm going to recline upon my bed. And I'm going to give all this stuff to you. And I'm going to just let it here and wait patiently. I'm going to just wait on you, Lord. Lord, you, you, you know that my body is weary and it's time to go to sleep. But, and, and you know, I, I just need to cast these on to you. The psalmist David went on to say, Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way. He goes, some people, they can't go to sleep or get rest. They can't find peace because everybody else around them are doing so well. And I'm not doing well. They're making money and I'm going in the hole. You know, Jesus was talking about coming, entering into his rest. And the only way we can get into his rest is by taking his yoke. He, he's made it easy. Yo, take is from the same original word that we find in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13, where the apostle Paul says, take the whole armor of God. So we see where he said, take my yoke upon you. It's taking the whole armor, taking possession. We see that in both instances, sit implies a definite act of faith. And it consists of 
the will. You know, we are told to take Jesus' yoke and we will find rest for our soul. You know, rest, rest, rest. Uh, peace and calm, quietness and the rest in the midst of turmoil and strife and the unrest. As the songwriter penned the words, you know, that they found peace in the midst of their storm-tossed life. You know, he becomes a rank and anchor in which we can cast our lot upon. You know, he can, he's that anchor that we can know that we can be steadfast and sure. That is what Jesus promised if we will reach out and take his yoke. You know, this doesn't imply by any means that we will be delivered from every fear and we'll have the freedom from every worry. But we do have that assurance that when we will take his yoke, we will be joined together with him. So we're not having to bear this alone. I must tell Jesus all of my struggles. I must tell him all my troubles, all my burdens on him alone, I'll share. We can go to him and because we are yoked together, we've taken his yoke, he said, I'm going to make it easy for you. care if you have a, 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 a horse, uh, a donkey, or an ox. I know it's a lot easier if you plow with uh, the ox and the, the horse than it is trying to get a donkey to plow. But you can take one animal and burden them down that can uh, plow the field for you. But just think about how, how much easier it is when you have two beasts of the same yoke together. They're going to get twice as much done with the least amount of effort. Think about how much effort it took for one, whether it's the, the ox or whether it was the, the cow. Pull that. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, we can, instead of doing one acre today, we can get 10 acres today because I've been yoked together. It just made my burden lighter. It made my burden easy. That's when we become yoked with Christ, when we take on His yoke. That's where it comes. He's made it easy. Did he, take it, did he make it any less work for us? No, we still have the work that's set before us. We still have the job, the responsibility to get the work done. But, oh, wow, how much easier it is for us. What is the yoke of Jesus? Any, ever thought about what his yoke? When you look at his life and his humanity, he spent his life about submission. Jesus knew that he was born to die. He knew that his mission on, in life was to prepare a way, to prepare some individuals. It didn't necessarily have to be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Peter, uh, uh, Paul. He would just knew that his mission was to call some men and some women into the gospel to prepare their heart for a, a job, a responsibility, a ministry. And in order for him to do that, he must be willing to submit what he, his wishes, what his likes, what he would like to do. Because he knew that he was born to die. And between his birth and his death, there was a short dash, but he had that just a short space of time to get things done. So when we look at his yoke, his yoke was about submission. 
to the will of God. So our yoke this morning that binds us together is about submission. It's about submitting to doing the perfect will of God. And then the third, Jesus said to learn. Learn of me. There are some things that can only be learned with the heart. I don't care how much head knowledge a person has. There are people this morning that's filled with all kinds of knowledge about the Word of God, but it's not in their hearts. So the, the learning must be with the heart. Through the actual experience, the things of the Spirit fall into this category. And this morning, when I think about what Jesus said to Martha, when she began to complain about Mary not helping with the dishes and with the cooking, with uh, preparing uh, the meal uh, for their guest, Jesus came kind of unannounced. He was there, which evidently he's made his appearance there at Bethany at their house before because they were known as friends. And friends do just occasionally pop in, uninvited, unannounced, but because you're friends, you don't care. You might feel a little embarrassed when they walk in, but friends, they don't care what your house looks like. As long as you move some papers to the side and find a place on the couch. Uh, if you're gonna fix a sandwich, as long as you can clear a little spot off the table so that you can you know, sit down at the table. They don't care how hot your house is, whether the air conditioner is, is not working that great. They came to be with you. And Mary was taking full advantage, being able to sit at the feet of one that she loved because she wanted to learn from him. She wanted to learn of him. This morning, Jesus said three things in command. Just come. Come in out of obedience to the word. Come in submission. He said, when you come, a person cannot come until they've been called. And he's still calling today. And once you've been commissioned to come, then out of obedience you take his yoke. Taking his yoke leads us into that area of learning. You know, the best place we can learn today is sitting at his feet. Sitting at his feet, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Jesus said, come learn of me. Take my yoke, it's easy. My burden is light. It's morning. He's still wanting us to come today. I don't care how long you've been living for God or not living for God. If you're not living for God, you need to be living for God. And if you're living for God, you need to be, you know, full strength ahead, on fire for God. And the only way you can be on fire this morning, doing His will, learning from Him, being into the Word, and not just in the head only, but get in the heart. Because people can tell you all the right things they ought to be doing because they know that's what you want to hear. It's another thing when you, you're doing it because you're being out of submission to the Word. Lord, I want to obey Your Word. I want to live my life in Your Word. I want to follow You, Lord, in Your Word. But I don't want to know You just from afar off. Lord, I, I don't want to just know You about my business, busyness of my life. But Lord, I want to know you in my business of my life. Let's all stand this morning. To trust in Jesus. Just to take him. At his very words. Just to rest. Upon his promise.
Just to know. 